What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the sweep tool in Rhino to extrude profiles along paths. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so basically what the sweep function is, is it allows us to take a profile inside of Rhino and actually extrude it along a path. Right, and so typically speaking, right, like a lot of the time we might select a curve like this one and we might do like an extrude curve. So if we do an extrude curve, what that's gonna do is that's gonna extrude this a certain distance based on a location that we set. However, that's not going to work if we wanna take this shape and we wanna extrude it so that it follows along a curve that has multiple different turns or something like that. So let's say for example that we wanted to extrude this along this curve right here, which is basically just two lines that I've joined together. So what we could do is we could type in sweep. Notice how there's a sweep one and a sweep two. We'll talk about sweep two in a minute. Sweep one basically means we have one rail or one path. And so if I activate sweep one, the first thing it's gonna ask me for is the rail. And so the rail is basically going to be the path along which you want to extrude something. So in this case, that's gonna be this object right here. So notice how now it's asking me for the sweep shapes. The sweep shapes is basically the uh, shape that you want to extrude along your path. So in this situation, if I was to select this, right, and then hit the enter key, Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna ask me for a seam point and I'm just gonna leave this as is. We're just gonna leave it right here and we're gonna hit the enter key. But basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna come through here and it's going to basically extrude this along this path. And so this is really valuable because notice how it comes in here and it actually like turns this around this corner right here. So um, you can use this in order to extrude things along very complex shapes. So let's say that we were to cancel out of this for a second. Let's say we were to add another line to this. So I'm going to add another line over here and then we're just going to go ahead and select these and join them together. So I'm just going to type in join. So now this is considered one long curve, but let's say we were to run sweep one again. So I'm going to select this, then I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit the enter key. I'm going to leave the seam point alone. I'm going to hit enter again. Well, notice how now what that's doing is that's extruding this along all of the curves. So you get a closed curve around this corner right here. Um, so you get the shape that's being extruded along this complex path. And so there are some options in here that are going to affect the way that this works. You're not going to worry too much about them for right now, but notice how, for example, if we click on the button to rebuild our cross sections, what that's going to do is that's going to rebuild our shape based on um, a number of points along this path. So we can adjust our complexity, All right? So if I type in five and then tab out of here, notice how that's just gonna basically rebuild this with only five control points in it. So um, notice how that does kind of simplify your shape in here, but we kind of lose a little bit of what we're trying to do. So generally speaking, if you just want the shape that you've already drawn in here, you just wanna click on the button to do not change cross sections. We'll look at some more examples of some of this other stuff in a second, but let's go ahead and hit the inner key for right now. And so notice how that's basically created a shape that follows along with this path. And so not only can you use this to follow along linear paths like this, you can also use it to follow along curves. So let's say that we wanted to extrude this object along this curve. We could just run sweep one and hit the enter key. And then again, we're gonna pick this as a rail. This is our shape and we're gonna hit enter. And we'll go ahead and just hit enter again. And so once we do that, notice how this time we're getting a shape that's basically extruded along this curve right here. And it's basically just been extruded um, 90 degrees along this curve. And so notice how again, we can adjust things like our cross sections, but when we rebuild our cross sections, notice how it's kind of like almost subdividing this edge in here to um, kind of simplify the whole thing. So again, I think I'm just gonna leave it on the do not change cross sections option for right now. We're gonna go ahead and click on okay. And so you can also do this for closed shapes. So let's say for example, that we wanted to run this again, like this, we're gonna select our rail, profile, Enter, enter. Notice how this will extrude this in a 360 degree direction all the way around this curve right here. And again, we're gonna click on okay. That allows us to create kind of like complex extruded shapes in here using paths. And so we could do that for, and notice how the extrusion shape that you have in here or the path shape that you have in here is going to affect this. So if we run sweep one, select this and then select this, I'm just gonna hit enter and enter again. Notice how this time I get something that's extruded along here, but um, it's got more of like a 
hole in the middle. So this one, right, for example, just backs up to the middle of my path right here. Well, this one is further outside. Well, if you do it further outside, then you're gonna get this gap in the middle. So the location of your path is going to affect your final result. And so not only can you use this to like lathe things along curves, you can also use it to create shapes that merge into other shapes. So let's say for example, that I had this object right here and I wanted a shape that started off as a triangle and it merged into a circle. Well, what we can do is we can run sweep one, hit the enter key and we're gonna select this path. Well, notice how I can select multiple shapes just by clicking just like this. And so now if I hit the enter key, notice how this is gonna show me that it's going to basically create a sweep that merges between these different objects. And so in this case, notice how I can click and drag um, this seam point right here. That's going to adjust how these correspond to each other. So let's say for example, that I wanted this to have a little bit of a twist to it. What I could do is I could set this so that my seam point um, sets the top so that it merges into the bottom right here. So if I hit the enter key, in order to run this, notice how this is twisting this shape right here. But it doesn't give me an ultra good result. And so you can definitely do that, but you get kind of like this weird crossover right here because it's not really sure how to interpolate that. So you just need to be careful with this when you do it. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to set this so that we've got our rail, and then we've got one point, and two points. And in this case, I really want my seam point on the top to correspond with the seam point on the top on this other side right here. And so there are some options in here that can adjust the way that those seam points work that I'm not really gonna worry about for right now. Instead, I'm just gonna hit the inner key. And so now if we look at this, notice what this is doing is this is coming through here and it's basically taking your triangle and across your shape, it's merging it into a circle, right? So here, these triangular shapes are a lot more defined, where notice how here they kind of like start merging into curves in the middle. So, and notice how you can kind of adjust that by checking the box for the global shape blending right here. You can also set it to rebuild those cross sections, and that may get you a little bit smoother result depending on what you're trying to do. In this case, again, I'm just gonna leave this on do not change cross sections right here, and we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. So if you wanna create something where an object merges along multiple different shapes on a path, this is a great option for doing that. And so you can also use this to create more like lofted style shapes. So let's say for example, that you wanted to loft these between these different points. So you wanted to create a surface that kind of moves along these points. Well, you can use the sweep one function in here in order to select the rail and then select these curves right here and you can hit the enter key. And so notice when it does this, what it's doing is it's coming in here and it's kind of like interpolating um, between these different curves. Um, and sometimes you want to uncheck the box for global shape blending because notice how it gets a little bit weird right in here. So you can definitely set this to uh, blend differently if you want to. And so you can kind of mess around with the way that this interpolates the shapes in here if you decide that you want to do that. Um, I've found that Honestly, usually using the freeform option is working the best for me, but if you do need to manually come in and align your axis, you can do that. Usually I end up doing that between this point and this point. If you do it elsewhere, right? So if I was to try to set my axis more like in this direction, notice how I start getting some weird results. So again, you can either set that manually using the alignment between two points, or you can just leave it on freeform. Um, the other thing you can do is you can add more detail in here, again, by using the rebuild cross sections function. So notice how if I do that, it just adds some additional geometric detail in here. If you start bumping that up a little bit, so you can use this in order to kind of adjust how the topology of the object is created in here. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And we've got our surface right here. Well, what I haven't talked about yet is using the sweep two function. So what the sweep two function is going to do is while this one is following a singular rail, right along here, this one, I have two rails, right? So what I wanna do here is I want a surface that's going to follow along both rails in here. So I want this to set the left side and this to set the right side. Well, all you have to do is instead of typing in sweep one, you just type in sweep two. And so with sweep two, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to select two rails, right? So I can click there, I can click there, and then I can add my points or my shapes. So I'm gonna click in here and select these shapes like this. I'm gonna hit the enter key. Well, notice what that does is that creates a surface that basically lofts along the different points 
on this surface um, or along these uh, different curves in order to create a surface. And so notice how your options are different with the sweep too, right? So there's different things you can select like maintain height. So if you check the box for maintain height, what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep the same general height that's in here instead of letting this kind of like balloon up in here. So sometimes uh, the best way for it to put smooth curves in here is to let it balloon up, but then you kind of lose your shape. So you can kind of adjust that in here. You can also adjust things like rebuilding your cross sections again, which is gonna add more detail. So if I bump this up to 10, notice how I'm gonna get additional lines in here making up this surface. So notice how that's going to affect how this follows along with your curves, right? So the more points you put in here, the closer it's going to follow along with your curve right here. So you can put a high value or a low value in here. You can also just set it to not change the cross sections, which is what I usually do. And so I am not going to lie to you. I do not know how to make these other options actually show up. Um, they've always been grayed out for me. So if anyone knows how to get those to toggle on, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. But in general, you can use this tool in order to create some really complex shapes inside of Rhino. All right, so that's kind of an overview of how you can use sweeps in Rhino. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you're using this function. If you have any questions, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.